Hey everybody, it's Jeff, and I'm here with Sean Walling. Walling. Hello. Uh, he is a bicycle industry guy, long time frame maker, parts maker, everything maker. And uh, we're sitting here on the porch of one of his old employees' shops that uh, it was an old company called uh, Sal Salsa? Salsa. Salsa. Salsa Bicycle Company, and they're here in Petaluma, California which is north of San Francisco. And uh, so this you spent a lot of time on this porch that we just showed walking up. Yeah, this is, uh, this is where I used to braise uh, binders, binder bolts, uh, um, binders, what we call them, on stems, stem clamps. Uh, I brought an old stem that I had in my right here. collection. And the uh, cable stops and the uh, hangers for the uh, rollers. What and, was uh, the the roller for? Was that for the shifter? <laughs> no, this was for the uh, front brake. So uh, instead of having a cable hanger hanging off for your cantilever brakes, your uh, this was your cable hanger. So the cable would come through, go down right to your brake. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. I think I must have had that set up on my bike. This is a pretty long stem. Uh, this is about a... a uh, this is a K14 model. So K14. K was, uh, if I remember right, a 26 degree, and then 14 was the uh, the extent uh, reach, not the extension. The way we measured stems at Salsa was not a long stem, but at a 90 degree angle, so you knew exactly how far you were actually reaching out from the axis of the steer. So. Did you guys use? Metric, millimeters, inches, was that like a, uh, we it looks used, like it's about, hang on a second, it looks like it might be about a, let me try my grip here. So that's about a six inch stem? Yeah, right. 14 uh, millimeter, or 14 centimeters. So 14 centimeters. 14. Oh, this is longer than 14. 14. This way is 14, so right. from these two points at 90 degrees are 14. Okay, got 14 it. 14 centimeters. So that's, a, uh, 14 centimeters is about 100 and, 96 roughly millimeters? 140 millimeters. Oh, 140 millimeters. Oh, that's right. Roughly. Okay. I mean, I don't know much about the metric system. So, I don't uh, I don't either. Yeah. This is and that was good. a quill, what they called a quill? Quill stem. This is the quill. 7 eighths diameter, fit inside a 1 inch steer. So that would slide down in, tighten it. And you could do this thing with these stems, which you can't do now. You could adjust them up and down. Okay. Without putting spacers in. Oh, right. No spacers. Yeah. This is pre-spacer stem. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you think this was something that you worked on? Possibly, yeah. I could have easily brazed this. You could have easily brazed it here on this Possibly porch. Painted it. And what? And painted as well. Possibly, yeah. You were painting. That's what I got hired to do was powder coat, originally. And uh, what? You, what time are we looking at here? What, what year uh, would have this been? I started been? working for Salsa in this building. This is where Salsa was when I started working for Salsa. Nineteen ninety. Okay. Nineteen ninety. Yeah. June. If I remember right, June nineteen ninety. And how old were you in 1990? I'd have been 20. Wow. So pretty much like dream job, 20 year old, working on bike stuff. Yeah. Brazing, absolutely. painting. Yeah. Working for, what was your boss's name? Uh, Ross Schaefer. Ross Schaefer. Yeah. Um, and he lived here in Petaluma? He did and he does. Yeah. He so still lives here. He still does. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how was he to work for? Total asshole. Really? <laughs> he was a great guy. Uh, he was... Were you guys all like punching clocks and like we had five minutes? Cards. We had time cards. Take yeah, your five minute break. Fill out. Uh, originally there was no breaks. It was just a lunch break. Uh, then later on we had I think two ten minute breaks. One in the morning, one in the afternoon. Right. So it got more, you know, corporate. If you could even say that. Um, um, you let me, I got a little chilly. So you let me borrow one of your merch, merches. Um, yep. This salsa... Cayente, you guys had merch as well, clothing and... Yeah, so uh, I can't remember what year it was. It was early 90s and Ross and his friend Jed Clark um, decided... Jed made clothing called House of Ed. And so he uh, and Ross had this idea to make sort of a leisure line of mountain bike clothing. So I don't think any company had done that before. Right. It was before Swobo, before Chrome, before anybody really that done, had done that. So... Um, they made or we made uh, sweatshirts. Like everybody made sweatshirts, but really it was uh, shorts, pants. They had um, pants. They had pants. They had uh, fleece pullovers. Uh, it was sort of off the bike apparel. Right. Yeah. But that was way before 
what a lot of companies are doing today. Yeah, well, there was that, no... Uh, there was no... Uh, Rafa. Yeah. Um, right. They were... They yeah. weren't around, right? No. No, no. Um, yeah, there was no... Did you have to sew or cut clothing or no. do... This was made... Um, I think a lot of it was made in San Francisco, actually. Okay. Yeah. And this was House of... House of Ed. Ed. That partnered with Ross, and the line was called Salsa Caliente. So there's a... On the back of this thing somewhere... Ow! <laughs> Turn the other way. Uh, right here. You can see the little... I hope we get that. Can you get that? SC, Salsa Lewis, Caliente. So get a shot of that, Lewis. It's the Pepper Man. Okay. Uh, modified. So uh, that was the... Yeah, it's nice. So what year do you think this was made? That was probably 93 or 4, Sweet. I'm guessing. Sweet. Yeah. Um, so you would come to work every day? Yeah. And you knew your job at work was going to be to make... Did you ever work on frames? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So out here on the deck, I would braze dropouts, all the brazons on the frames. So we would uh, TIG weld them inside, they'd come out here, get finished brazed, and then uh, I would go back inside and do uh, head tube facing, uh, reaming, bottom bracket tapping, uh, C-tube reaming, and then alignment, um, and then sometimes paint, depending on what wow. was going on. So everything was done here, nothing was really sent out so much? No. No, everything was done in house. Right. Yeah. And then you'd pack the frames up and send them out to the bike shops. Yeah, and I would do that too. Sometimes. Wow. And so how many people everything. were you here working with that were doing all the different things? Uh, so we had Ross, um, Julie, John, Jeff, another John, a Mark. Uh, there was probably uh, Al, seven or eight of us, and, and up to ten at right. different times at this shop. Right. Yeah. And it was a pretty good work environment. It was... Yeah. Oh, yeah. You enjoyed it? Oh, totally. Yeah. It wasn't like, fucking Ross is on my ass again to get these stems brazed. Some days it was like that. Well, you guys come out on the porch and like smoke a cigarette and bitch about Ross? <laughs> no. You just come out and work. This wasn't the... Uh, it wasn't really the break area. It was the work area. Our was place. it cold and rainy and windy like it always is here? It, yeah. I mean, we're underneath an overhang, so it wasn't like I was out in the elements, but I was out in the elements in terms of... This is our view from the porch. It used to be the salsa porch is now what appears to be just an empty, vacant business that could be up for grabs. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would spend every day out here brazing uh, just thousands of stem binders and dropouts and whatever. This wasn't my whole career in salsa out here into this porch, but... There was, you know, a couple of years probably sitting out here every day. And so when did you leave uh, Salsa? Uh, that was 99. I and mean, we moved the shop from here to uh, 2nd Street, okay. which is further down the river. Uh, that was 93, maybe, okay. somewhere in there. Right. So we were at that shop until Quality Bicycle Parts bought Salsa in... I think it was 98. Um, That's a big outfit, huh? Yeah, yeah. The okay. biggest distributor, bicycle parts distributor in, uh, in the United States. Wow. So they bought Salsa, kept the shop open for a year and some change, and then decided that they didn't want to have a manufacturing place here in Petaluma, so they shut it down. Those bastards. Yeah, yeah. But and did anybody take a job with um, quality and no uh technically uh they they said that they had offered us jobs but uh no one really pursued it and they weren't technically offers it wasn't like hey we want to offer you this much money to come work for us it was sort of a open-ended thing if you guys want to come work for us let us know and we'll figure something out oh. none of us wanted to do that wow so, it's in minnesota who wants to go to minnesota S nobody wanted to leave the porches in minnesota are much colder yeah, I don't think I could have done brazing in the winter. Outside. And then you went on and started your own company. Yes, Soulcraft. Soulcraft. Yes. Um, and were you brazing dropouts and binders there as well? Uh, no, we were welding dropouts. Okay. Uh, same basic thing, but a little bit different. Right. But we kind of just carried on what we were doing here at Salsa, but without the stems. Okay. We, we made stems, but that wasn't our primary 
focus. It was frames. Did you hire Ross or anybody else to come work for you? No, but I did partner with Matt Neary, who was my original partner, my only partner, um, who worked at Salsa. He was the he was the sales guy, so he would sell the frames to the shops, and at the end, I was the the head frame builder. So we had kind of already decided at some point that we wanted to do Soulcraft, and we weren't really sure how or when it was going to happen. And then when Quality told us. We were all kind of leaving. Right. We decided, all right, we're going to do this. Um, but when we started, Ross, who had he had sold salsa, he was an employee for a certain amount of time, and then he quit. Right. He had bought a, a farm outside of town, had a shop to rent, an apartment. So when we started Soulcraft, we rented the apartment and the shop. Oh wow, for nice. Him. So so he just took his millions and was like, ah. later I'm buying a ranch. Yeah, I don't and think it was millions. I don't. I never. I've never known that the amount is sort of like if I don't know, I can't tell anyone. But right. I know it wasn't in the millions. I do. It know wasn't that. billions. It wasn't in the billions. Okay. It was, there was nothing with a B or an M on it. Okay. So he cashed out and was like later and like bought an Airstream and. Harley and he, a bunch of toys. He, and, no, he no. was. He's never been that kind of guy. Wow. He was super conservative in terms of his money, and oh. he bought a farm for. Uh, and he put an infinity pool in it. <laughs> no. No. Oh. Sheep, pigs. Oh, okay. Uh, wo a wood shop, music studio. Right. You know the things that most people do. Right. With he's a musician too. Right? He is. Yeah. Plays guitar and builds. Amps, builds guitars, mandolins. I mean, he can build anything. Okay. Yeah. Nice. In fact, he's doing what he's doing now is uh, pedal steel guitars, like the country guys play. They sit down and play the right. kind of funky, cool guitars. Right. He makes those. That's what he does. Wow. Yeah. So you can buy a Ross Schaefer salsa pedal steel. It's actually called a Sierra Steel. That's the company that he works for. Oh, okay. But the ones, I mean, they're they're amazing, beautiful instruments. Wow. Yeah, really cool. Cool. Um, so there's a bunch of bike activity up here in NorCal. There's yeah. uh, Ibis, who I've talked to recently, Chuck over at Ibis. Mm -hmm. um, you got your Soulcrafts. You've got uh, you got uh, your Seasip. Uh, Seasip. I never knew if it's Psychip or Seasip or Seasip. Seasip. That's okay. the way he says it. Seasip. So I figure that's good enough for and me. And then uh, Kurt. Curtis Inglis. Curtis Inglis. Retro Tech. Yep. Um, God. He makes the beach cruisers. Yeah, beach cruisers, exactly. That's and very popular. And then there's um, uh, the Gordon guy. Bruce Gordon. He's Bruce in Gordon. town. He's in town. Until he's, uh, he's got his place up on the auction block. He does. Yeah, he is. Uh, Have you been tempted to move in on oh, that? Fuck no. <laughs> no. That's like frying pan into beyond the fire. I mean, not because it's Bruce's, just because why would I want to buy a bicycle company or a, uh, you know, another company? Because you could call it like Sean Gordon or Soul Gordon or something cool. Yeah, well, uh, I did work for Bruce when I started before I worked for Salsa. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you got a long business. history in the, in the business. Yeah. When did you yeah. first start? Like, what was your first job in the bike industry? Uh, it was a, uh, at a bike shop called Fargo Bikes in Terra Linda in Santa Fe. Okay. Was, so you've always been kind of a NorCal kid. Oh yeah, I grew up in Santa Fe. Okay. Yep. Ventured all of 18 miles north of where I grew up. Right. So, yeah, um, and it was, you know, certainly wasn't my choice. It was just happened that I grew up. So in you spot. went to work for Bruce. He was probably like 60, 65 back then. And no, he was, he was younger. Uh, I'm trying to think if he was older or younger than I am now. Uh, let's see if he's close to 70 now wow let's 70. just say for math terms he was he's 77 to make it easy math so what would he have been in 1990 uh 10 10 years old 30. no <laughs> how many years oh 90 that? i don't so that's like uh, the metric 27 figure. years ago right right so what's uh 50 yeah so he's just barely older than i am right now okay yeah and you went to work for him was he as much of a dick as Ross was to work for? Uh, no, he wasn't a dick to, to me. He was a dick to his customers. Oh, to the customers. <laughs> well, that doesn't matter. Yeah. He, yeah, same amount of dickishness, but just 
pointed in a different direction. Okay. I, 180 degrees in the other direction. Right. No, Ross was not a dick. I'm how long kidding. did you last? I mean, how long did you work did for Briz? Last? Uh, almost two years, I think. Wow. Yeah. So Which said, in Bruce years is how many? Uh, yeah, it's like more than dog years. Right. I don't want it. It's like double the dog years. Okay. Yeah. So like five years. Bruce was great to work for. Like I said, it wasn't. He wasn't a dick to me. It was a dick to his customers. Okay. So. Um. And I think so. One day that. you were just like, did you, did you ever consider just like throwing up your hands and getting out of the bike industry? Uh, not really. I mean, I could have done that. Probably the time to do it would have been. Uh, when salsa moved and got rid of everybody uh that would have been and mo most of the people that worked there did i was matt and i were the only ones that stayed in the bike industry and uh, matt my old partner he works at uh, camelback now oh, he's nice. got some new job title that has a lot of words in it okay yeah that's the uh, hydration company yep okay mm -hmm. you still have some souvenirs left over from uh salsa yeah, i do we found this old uh catalog brochure which actually has some interesting photos on it yeah so we're we're actually sitting right here so that door behind us is this door yeah right we here. saw that on the way in yeah so uh we're sitting on the same porch where you guys worked and came out yep and worked and sat so there's me no no that's not me i didn't have a mustache that's me wow that's me i had a little bit of a mullet cool on. check that out yeah. nice um, and that was the inside. There's the inside, all the frames hanging. Uh, this is a super long, narrow shop with barely any windows. Um, Let me get a little closer up of that. Okay. Yeah. And there's somebody with a welder. Brazing. Brazer. Doing uh, binders on the, on the porch. What's that guy doing? Ross. He's aligning a frame. Is that Ross? That is Ross. Okay. Yep. And he was definitely younger than I am now in that photo. Uh, I got Alan up here doing uh, slotting, slotting binders. You know, putting the slot for the clamp. Bunch of uh, frame, or stems in production. Wow. Richard. My Green. stem could be in that box somewhere. Yeah, that very well could be. With some uh, CSI technology, I'm sure we could figure that out. Uh, so that's you. That's I'm reaming a C2. Yeah, that's an a la carte frame. Uh, How many ladies worked for Salsa? One. That would be Julie right there. Julie, okay. She was the office manager. Okay. Yep. And how was she? She was awesome. Yeah. Cool. Is that, is oh, that Julie there? that's her too. Working the lathe, yeah. That looks like more than office manager. Oh, yeah. She was out in the shop doing whatever. Ross, was, was he just like, dude, the phones aren't ringing. Yeah. Go get on the lathe. Sure. Yeah. Well, and that's, when, you know, any small business, you got to be flexible. you got to be able to do multiple uh, tasks. So, yeah, and then uh, I think there might be a. Actually, there's another catalog in here. Various. 1995, uh, cool. Yeah, 95. And then we went big time, and uh, this was probably 96 or 7, I guess. This was the clothing. Oh, there we go, 96. 96. Yeah. So, yeah, this is when. Uh, oh, this is everything. This is the frames and the. Uh, yep, stems, the whole deal. And this is where they moved on to the, yep. the clamp-on stem? Yeah, so we did prototypes. I don't know what you call those, but it's the... Yeah, uh, threadless. Oh, uh, threadless, Back right. Back then it was called the A-head system because that was a, I think, a trademark term from uh, Cane Creek, Diacomp. Okay. And so we made the original prototypes for those stems, for that system. Uh, we made them uh, here in the shop, actually. Nice. Yeah, a headset. So there's the trademark right there. Okay. Um, yeah, trademark of Diacomp right there. So I don't know when that trademark right. ran out. Neat. But, uh, and you guys had the little clamp that went around the bar. I figured out a neat trick one day that um, I should have told more people about this, but you can reverse the bolt and actually put a, like a penny or a coin in there. Yeah. And put the bolt in backwards. and You figured that out yourself? I did, yeah. I should have told more people about that. Yeah, we, we, that was something that we told people pretty early on. Yeah. Oh, you guys knew about that? We knew. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was my idea. Yeah. Well, it could have been your idea. Um, I felt... Parallel development. Right, because there was no internet back there. Later. You couldn't just put up a video on YouTube and say, this is how to yeah. hack your stem. It's how to build a frame. It's how to start a company with a website and look cool. Right. You guys yeah. just had like a phone on the wall and... Absolutely. And a fax. And, and a fax. A fax and a, machine. Ross would answer the phone? 
Sure. Any, so yeah. you can call up Salsa and have Ross uh, Salsa answer the phone. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Is uh, is Ross Mexican? No, he's not. He's, uh, what's his nationality? Why, why did he call it Salsa? He liked Salsa. He liked Salsa. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was a big fan. So that was it. Just that was it. Like the food. Yeah. Call the company. Simple as salsa. that. Thought it was fun. It could have been chips or guacamole for all we know. Yeah. We could have been looking at a guacamole catalog. Could have been ham. Could have been bacon. I mean. Okay. I'm sure, there's lots of other things that are up there on the what, list. What? Um, so, and he had racers racing his bikes. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, when I started here, uh, Mar. Uh, uh, Martha Kennedy was on the team. She was uh, one of the top pros at the time. So he is she. She's not from the Kennedy family. I don't think so. Okay. Um, I think Salsa was the first company to have an all women's mountain bike team. Wow. Yeah. Yep. So there were. I don't know who else was on. Well, Christine Culver. Okay. She was. Uh, she lives locally in Santa Rosa. She was the very first women's Norba downhill champion. Whoa. Yeah. So uh, we had some pretty heavy hitters on the team. Nice. Yeah. Were they like caddy and fighting and like, I want to be first and you were first I last time. I couldn't tell you. I never hung out with them. Right. I don't think that was the case. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I couldn't tell you. Okay. Yeah. Well, you could tell me. Maybe once we're off the air, you can oh, yeah, tell me. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and then you had racers as well for Salsa, Cra- Salsa Craft. What was the name of your company? <laughs> Soul Craft. Soul Craft. Yeah. You had racers as well. We did. Yeah. Uh, we had a really good team uh yuri hoswald uh shane Bresnian, uh duncan myers rich thurman matt neary miguel crawford right uh, aaron timmel michael hosey uh, i know i'm forgetting some people um we had uh megan shane's wife um now Brazilian. Uh, she raced for us for a while. Right. Um, Kim Fant. Uh, who hmm. else? Yeah. You had a big team. Big team. Yeah. yeah. And you built the bikes for all the racers? We did. Yep. And um, those were all mountain bikes? Did you have road bike teams? Uh, it was more of a mountain bike team, but they definitely raced roads as well. So they all had, if they wanted a road bike, we would build them a road bike. Okay. Yeah. Most of them did. And um, you guys did pretty well as a team? Yeah, very well. Yeah. Um, a lot of the team went on to get sponsored by other companies. Yuri went to Marin. Uh, I know, I think Shane and Duncan maybe were on a specialized team at some point. Right. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot of frame builders now. There's NABs, there's uh, Handmade. Yep. There's these little cool guy niche things popping up all over the place with oh, frame yeah. builders and absolutely so it's pretty as long as you have the money it's pretty much easy to do right yeah it seems to be that uh, you can just bang out a couple dozen frames a week and <laughs> yeah. you're in business yeah well uh, yeah there are more frame builders now than there ever have been so i if anyone asks me hey what should i do I want to get into the business um i tell them it's not like it used to be. There's not as much real estate left for anyone to, to work with in terms of sales. So you're competing with well-established builders, all the new guys, and you should just keep your day job and do it as a hobby. Wow. So, um, you know, to make it a an actual put food on the table type of deal, it's, it's almost impossible to do that, you know, certainly out of the gate. You're not going right. to go to UBI, learn how to build a frame, and then hang a shingle and say, all right, I'm taking orders, I've I've quit my job. I mean, that would be ridiculous. Um, Right. And I don't think anyone really does that. Yeah. So Soulcraft has been going for how many years and you're still cranking out? Uh, 1999. Um, Wow. So you've got a pretty, as far as frame building goes, you're probably one of the long running successful guys. uh, Yeah, I I mean, yeah, I think so. Without success being a, and you yeah. haven't sold out to a car manufacturer or anything yet? Only because they haven't offered anything. <laughs> so if, if Hyundai came along and said... Oh, God, yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> We're going to give you six figures to make bikes labeled Hyundai. Fuck yeah, I'd do it. Yeah. Wow, okay. I would even do it for a, a lesser car company than Hyundai. 
All right. Yugo, are they still around? I, I they might be. Yugo. I don't know if they have six figures. If they, if five, they are, you know, five figures. Would that be might, good too. that might break uh, the bank for Yugo. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Like the uh, Klein and Bontrager and Salsa and all those companies that have kind of disappeared because of the big offers. But you're still sticking it out. We saw your shop earlier. And, uh, uh, well, yes and no. So I, uh, in December, took a job working for White Industries in town, making... Oh, I think uh, I've heard of those guys. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I started working there in December. So I'm going to be doing Soulcraft on the side uh, when and if I want to do it, you know. Right. Whatever I want to build, when I want to build it. Okay. So, so people will still be able to buy a Soulcraft bike. Yeah. But some people, some people only because I'm only going to make a certain amount. Okay. Yeah. So they have to be rich, probably number one. No, I don't think I'm. I'm actually planning on doing stock bikes, and not charging a shitload for them. I mean, not more than I need to charge to make a living doing it. Right. Or, you know, whatever I want to make doing it. Are the people at White, Doug, and uh, Alec and Lynette? They're cool with what you're doing. Totally. If they see you, like, texting on your phone, Doug's not like, I hope that's not a Soulcraft customer. No. I uh, I haven't texted anybody to deal with Soulcraft. Uh, everybody's upset that I haven't texted them back, called them, or emailed them. I apologize. But I s- most of the time, I'm at work doing a different job. So I saw one of those pound signs on Twitter that was like, pound sign, fuck Soulcraft. Yeah. So... That is that bound to happen? People are getting cranky about their bikes. I don't know. I mean, there's no one really waiting for a bike, so there's nothing to complain about. It's more complaining that. Are you? Do you use them. social media a lot? The Twitter and Instagrams? Not for a while. I haven't. Uh, Instagram is the only thing I use, and okay. I haven't used that for months. It's so, nice. do people go on Instagrams and place an order for a bike there? No, nah, not ever. No. Not ever. They, okay. They email. They call. Right. And you have people come by the shop to pick up their If they're local, yeah. Yeah. That's the preferred method of sale would be not to ever have to ship a bike, but um, that's not What's the farthest away customer you've had that's shown up at your shop? How far away have somebody lived? Uh, The UK. He 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 flew overnight, red eye, came and got fit, and then jumped back on a plane and went home. Wow. Yeah. Pretty cool. I think he partied. After he got off the plane here, then came and got fit, and then went home. So it was even better than just getting on a plane and nice. flying. Nice. Yeah. So, yeah, that was impressive. Cool. Yeah. That was a nice ego stroke, too. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, okay, so people go to soulcraftbikes.com, soulcraftbicycles. Bikes.com. Soulcraftbikes.com. Yep. They can see the stuff you order. You mentioned you're kind of moving away from the full custom. That's my plan is to just do off the shelf stock frames and uh, probably leave them unpainted and just have the customer pick the paint and uh, decals and then send them out. And then you'll spray paint them with a, a yep. can in the back? Rattle can them and you know, charge them an insane amount of money to rattle can them. Right. Uh, but that's kind of cool now. It's like you, yeah. you the builders, rattle canned it himself. Uh, well, that's what Squid Bikes um, does up in Sacramento. Um, uh, Emily, she uh, she sort of revolutionized the whole custom paint thing. Does ra- just rattle can. Okay, jobs. I don't know if we want to really promote another bike company in this I, interview. I'll promote but, anybody. It's not going to hurt my. Um, and then, so you would powder coat it based on the color that they want, and mm, based on the colors that I offer. Here's here's the offer. Here's here's what you can choose from. Pick a color. Okay. I'm not going to do custom stuff. No custom paint, no custom geometry. Nope. nope. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, like, I would get a large hardtail. Do you f- do any suspension squish bikes? Nope. Do we you do to. the Boost um, Plus uh, Poss, bike? We've done it. I don't know if it'll end up on a stock bike. I'm not sure. Okay. Depends on if it needs it or not. Do you do fat bikes? Uh, no. What kind of motors do you use on your e-bikes? No e-bikes. No e-bikes. Not, that's was, a big thing, though. If I was smart, I would be doing e-bikes because I think that's like a legitimate. Like you could probably make a lot of money if you're a bike shop. I know a lot of shops are getting into that, so um, make as much fun of e-bikes as you want. But somebody is going to make a lot of money on that. 
Yeah, they were racing him at Sea Otter this year. They had an e bike, e mountain bike race. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> well, I'm Jeff. This is Sean uh, from the Salsa Porch. Used to be a bustling bike manufacturer back in the 90s. And uh, it's kind of cool to revisit the spot yeah. and imagine what was happening. I, I can been still here smell. Since we left. I can still smell the weed. Were you guys all <laughs> high? Or? No, I I, did, I didn't and don't smoke weed. Um, I, I I know some folks did back then, but uh, was Ross just like high as fuck and like? No. no. Where's my frames? <laughs> no, no, no. And Julie is like rolling his joints at the when the phone's not ringing. No, she, uh, I don't think I ever saw any joints being rolled here. Right. Uh, and what was next was door? Off. You guys had uh, some interesting neighbors. Yeah, we had the Alano Club next door, which was all the uh, the AA meetings happened, and so they had meetings kind of all day going right. here. And some folks lived in their RVs right in the parking lot and cooked bacon and fished in the river. It was a kind of a did they scene out here? They cooked bacon here in their RV in the RV parked yeah, so I'd outside be out here, here working, and I'd smell the bacon. And it would just drive me nuts. I mean, who doesn't? Like bacon, and they'd go out just beyond that railing out there is a river. Yeah, they'd fish in the river. It's actually a slough technically, so it's kind of a brackish kind of mix of salt water from the bay and fresh water. What? But, um, okay, that's what a slough is. Yeah, it's kind of a tidal in and out with the tide. Yeah. And they would eat, eat fish and, and come uh, back and make like bacon wrapped fish. I don't know what happened if they ever even caught a fish in the river, but um, I. I assume that if they did catch one, they ate it. So, yikes! Yeah, yikes! Did they ever bring you guys uh, offerings <laughs> like bacon or fish? Unfortunately, no. Potatoes? No. Weed? No. Nothing. Beer? Not even a drink. Could you guys drink beer while you were working? No, I don't think. Uh, actually, there was a few. Yeah, on Fridays once in a while you get a beer about four o'clock, and four thirty is when we ended work. So there were times when you probably had about a half hour of drinking. Right. Cool. Yeah. Did yeah. you guys ever do, like, lunch rides are kind of a big thing now for companies. Did you guys ever do any, like, yeah. community, company, we did, lunch uh, rides, bike rides? Every, when the season, you know, when the weather got good, we would do a, I don't know if it was Monday or Tuesday, I can't remember. We'd do a shop ride, so we cut out at 3.30, I think, or possibly, I think it was 3.30. So about an hour early, and go, you know, drive up to Annadel or Point Reyes or down to Annadel is... Uh, the state park in Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa, okay. Yep. And then Point Reyes had some riding out there. Uh, we go south to Mount Tam. Okay. I, I can't remember how you pronounce it, but uh, Tim Apple Pace. Yeah, Tim Apple Pace. Uh, you go to China Camp. Uh, yeah, quite a few places we used to. Cool. Go. So you would ride and come back to work, or no, that no. would be at the end of the day. That'd be at the end of the day. Okay. Yeah. Blow mm -hmm. off some steam. Yeah, it was awesome. Take out all your frustrations on your coworkers. Yeah, yeah. Just like drop the guy you're mad at. Just like. Yeah. Usually I would ride behind Ross going down stuff, and he, he had a, he still has it, a drop bar mountain bike. And then at some point he would just. <laughs> Those cold guys in their drop, drop bar, bar mountain, mountain bikes. bikes. It was yeah. like, dude, what are you thinking? It was, it was always uh, entertaining oh. to be back there because at some point the rear end would come off the ground and there'd be just this nose wheelie, nose stand, endo stall, and then. Most of the time, he was able to pull it off. But wow. Yeah, that was always fun to see. Oh, man, those are good times. Yeah. They're still good times, you know? Yeah. Just, yeah. Just nobody's here. Yeah. Except for us, and there's some kind of party next door with a bunch of music. Yeah. Um, well, the, the parking lot that the punks used to play beer can hockey in is now a super trendy beer garden. So Petaluma has changed quite a bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of like bistros and gastropubs and fancy loft living workspace places. Yeah, um, it's definitely changed. It's still good though. I mean, it's a, it's still a small town. And, right. But um, hang on, I'm getting a text. Let's see who that is. I'll, I'll be right here waiting. Yeah, no, I just gotta see. I think it's my uh, motion cam at home texts me when people walk by it. No. Yeah, no, that's cool. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I think we'll wrap it up and maybe go check out one of these hipster, trendy gastropubs and yeah, get I'm a hungry. craft artisanal cocktail. Sure. Uh, thanks for watching. And uh, if you want to check out Sean's work, 
Check out soulcraftbikes.com. Find him on Instagram at Soulcraft Bikes, I think. Soulcraft Bikes. Uh, pound sign you can use, Soulcraft Bikes. And um, that's it. See you next time. Thank Thanks. you, Jeff. Take care.